He lived and prophesied holy at Jerusalem. And he seems to have disappeared from history. At the account in Isaiah 39, Roger, the first eight verses, he seemed to have gone off the scene. Well, how did he nay abruptly leave the scene? According to tradition among the Talmudists and fathers relate that the prophet Isaiah was sown asunder during the reign of Manasseh. And this tradition is in one of the apocryphal books, Money Fair, that is called The Ascension of Isaiah. Did, did he really die by being son of thunder? Now, I, that I don't know. I, but what I do know is this. The writer of the Hebrews informed they, they were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, destitute, prosecuted, and mistreated. The writer of the Hebrews says some were sown in Sunday. I wonder to Baba, how could they submit to that? They could submit because they knew if they stayed here long enough, their bodies were going back to the dust. And many in the New Testament heard the words of Jesus, don't fear those who can destroy your body. They can get their souls, Jerome, and keep sawing. It was a bad thing. And I, and I, 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 would not, I would not compare this with anything. I know there are people who are comparing, but it's such a dastardly deed. I don't think anybody ought to compare with what happened to the young lady who just finished law school. I, that, that ain't nothing to be used. I don't care who uses it. If it's my mama, that ain't nothing to be used. That, it's, it's such a pathetic situation. I don't need no brownie points or political advantage to talk about something like that. I don't care. What color she was, it was an horrendous act. But if she, if she knew Jesus, all the sowing could not dig deep enough to get to her soul. And, and though yeah, her life was wiped out, her soul is resting easy. I wish I had a witness here. And that, that, that's why, that's why they tell me back in World War II modern that uh, they'd call for a prayer meeting. And there were several parents there. Many were crying. They had uh, boys. At that time, boys would go to the battlefield. And they were praying that uh, the Lord would move because many of them in church had uh, sons who had been killed in war. And that was a young, an old lady in that church, Solomon, whose son had been killed. She sat in the back that night, yeah, uh, and she got up with a stick. And Thomas Grigg, she started walking down the aisle singing, I'm not worried by my soul. I'm not. I done fixed it up with my. And I. Son gone. But here she is singing, despite that, my life is in God's hand. Anybody in this place got the same kind of testimony 
that you are not worried about your soul. You've already fixed it up with Jesus. Lord, help us in this house here today. I, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to be too long, Mary. I, I just don't want to be too long in here. Oh, uh, now we know Isaiah to be a prophet, but it's also said from me. Take this from me that he's also an evangelist. Now, I know the Bible doesn't call him an evangelist, but when I see the way he comes across in this passage, how neat fair he shares his heart with thirsty souls, and, and I think it went further than his time. I think it goes even into our, our present day. And we listened on last week how he shared with us that the Lord invites the thirsty to the well for water. And there's water for every fainting and dry soul. Now there are two other beverages that are so listed in our text. Wine and milk. We're familiar with water but Leon, wine and milk. Uh, and milk products and wine, milk products were really not produced in the Bible land. But it says wine and milk. Now, since we know, uh, Minister Whitfield, that Isaiah to be a master of illustrations, and he talks a lot about nature and contemporary culture, he must have something in mind. Now, if he is a master of illustration, I've got a feeling, Alex, it's deeper than natural water. It's deeper than wine. And it's deeper than just milk. Well then, Thomas Grigg, it has to represent something greater than H2O, something greater, Tanya, than wine and milk. Larry, it has to deal with spiritual revival. Do I have a witness here? For many of us who are crying how dry I am, the Lord says, I offer you something. You've been crying too long. You are spiritually dry. And even the music this morning meant nothing to you. And if anybody has 10 cents worth of sense about real singing. Mm, I, I see how some of y'all are looking. But I'm talking about showing up. Real singing. But it's been a long time. Since you've been able to feel something. I don't, I don't want you to put on no show. I don't want you running down these aisles, peeping, and see who's looking at you. But I want somebody who turns it over to the Lord. And when it's turned over to the Lord, you don't need Eddie D. Smith Sr. to tell you to stand up. And give the Lord a hand clap of praise when you start thinking on how good God something on the inside of you starts turning and turning on the inside. You you hadn't planned to stand, you hadn't planned to wave your hand. You you even said, I said I wasn't gonna tell. 